So now, how do you look back, knowing what you know now about the business and running your own yeah. indie label, and how do you look back on your dad's business as a businessman? I mean, obviously you're a fan of music, and right. it's, your, it's your dad, but as you kind of can look at it as a, as a business and its impact at the time, yeah. what do you take from that? I mean, I can only hope to, to have a legacy such as his. I mean, like, yeah. you know, that would be a dream to... It's like a zeitgeist moment. Really is. Yeah, that, it would be a dream to, to have that kind of impact on the on the future slash future history of music. Is that possible from a label standpoint these days? Uh, I think it's possible from a label. I think it's possible from an, from a label standpoint if they pick if you know if, if their artists are actually meaningful, if they're impactful. Well, a lot of labels nowadays seem to pick artists like in a style. So to right. pick like Kiss and Donna Summer right, and Georgia Marauder. That's how I do. That's how you do. Really, if I love it, if I'm passionate about it, I will go to war for it. Right on. Period. So you grew up playing keyboards, like as when you were growing up. Before you became I grew up playing piano lessons. And That's good. Recitals. <laughs> I was just talking about it yesterday. My piano teacher growing up ended up marrying some like big publisher, and I ended up seeing her at a lot of these like like music business events. And she's always like telling my writers and artists like, "How is Evan's piano teacher?" Yeah. That's so embarrassing. Yeah. Do you see any upcoming? Um, Keyboard playing apps that are tweaking your noggin at all? Um, that are like driven by driven by keys or fronted by keys. Fronted by keys. I mean, obviously, I gotta give you know, I gotta give a shout out to my buddy Ryan Tenner because I yeah. think Ryan's an, an incredible um, pianist in the sense that um, as far as his composition, he's not like he doesn't sit down and like play classical music. Right. And like like I have another friend of mine is a producer, Jared Rodham, who can play play playing any classical yeah, music, any yeah. jazz piece. That, Ever known to man, right? And we, when we were in the studio, like he would have other people come in there and say like they have as good of a year as him. So we used to play a game where I would walk up to the to the to the keyboard and I would get a bunch of notes, and they would like rattle off which notes they were. Wow! Just like off off perfect pit. Like, wow. It was very interesting. But like, <laughs> so Ryan's not like that. Yeah. But like, yeah, I think I think the way he composes, he composes everything on keys first, and it's just so beautiful. I mean, he just has an amazing sense of composition. Are you seeing in the newer generation of songwriters um, more of an openness to write in many different ways, or any, everybody's got their own thing, and this person writes like that? Or I personally think that nowadays music is so meshed, and we, my, you know, the generation I grew up in. I feel like listen to so many different things. You know, me coming up, I was like the kid listening to like Public Enemy and Trap Club Quest, wearing right. a jean jacket that with like Guns N' Roses and yeah. Skid Row patches. You know, like yep. it was. A, I was very like very diverse in what I listened to growing up. You know, yep. and I think that this generation that's making music, or even the generation that's governing music right now, right, grew up listening to such crazy different things. So I think in order to really keep up with what, where music is going, you have to be diverse. You have to have an education in many different types of genre. Right. You have to be able to write in all the genre. I mean, you, at a certain point, you get stale without influence. Indeed. Everyone's been influenced. Everything you know, is you're influenced by the wind. You're right. influenced, right? Yeah. So I think that, you know, why wouldn't you want to know something that great? I was in a session with a writer the other day, which I will remain nameless, and we were calling the song With It Without You. Right. Um, and he ended up singing inadvertently the melody. From you twos with or without you, right? She may have heard somewhere, and we looked at him and said, "Oh, that's that's cool. Like we should actually rip that. It's, it's actually catchy. Like if we're all if we're all down, let's try to get it cleared. You know? Yeah. Like, and um, he's like, he's like, what do you mean? He didn't know the original. I was, like, I was you know, you two with or without you. He's like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so we like pulled it up on YouTube, and he's like, I've never heard this song in my life. Wow. Do you think that <laughs> culture has sped up so much that we're literally yeah. shedding yes. the, the past? Absolutely. Like, exactly if, you walk right to, if you walk up to any 15-year-old kid on the street right yeah. here on Sunset yeah. Boulevard and said, yeah. who's Janis Joplin? Or who's... No, no clue. No clue. No clue. No, bro, no clue. And so it's, it's, it's <laughs> weird to see that the, happen. The kids that are trying out for the for majors and minors, totally no. Because they're, the, reason they, the reason they're so versed in what they're doing, the, the most part, is their parents. Yeah. And, like, and a lot of them will come in and play a song by Janis Joplin, and you're like, but can you play something like more relevant? Yeah. And they're kind of like, uh, uh, which is also bad. Yes. Right? So like, they're not connecting to their actual age. No, I had a conversation also with the main art guy the other day about Eminem. Like, to this generation, Eminem is like the angry white rapper guy. Yeah. Right? Like, and you say to them, like, have you listened to his first, like, first three albums? But no. Like, can you go back and listen to like, his, the first three albums, like three of the greatest rap albums of all time. How is there yet all you are hung up on this last album or like you know, right. the album before, which was awful. So it's like, right. you know, I, 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 people aren't. I think that you nailed it. I think I think we're moving so fast 
that we don't give. And there's so much there's music. time for music to resonate. It's almost like if you're a student of music, yeah. you have so much work to cut, cut yeah, out for you if you didn't grow up listening. Once, one Sunday a month, I'll sit there and go on iTunes and start downloading things and listening to records because I'm like, yeah, man, how, when do I have time to catch up on so much new music yeah. that's coming out? It's great to see bands, too. We were talking about Sloan before. Uh, who, after 20 years, put out a record that's as relevant as anything they've ever done, and it's great. Because sometimes, you know, a band will put out a, an older band will put out a new record, and everybody goes, you know, they play a new song, and everybody goes to the bathrooms during the, the set, you know? Yeah. I think Gaga um, grew, grew so quick and influenced music so much that by the time she came around to do a second album, there wasn't enough to do. There wasn't enough to say. I think she already evolved so much on the first album and through the re-release. Interesting. But this album kind of feels a little stamp, right? And then they have songs like Edge of Glory, which which I was really really critical of when I first heard on the radio, but is now, but in my opinion, is like the best song on her album by far. Wow. Um, but still, to me, it feels like a dance remix of a of a Karate Kid album cut from the first soundtrack. Right. So how fast is too fast? You know, in this day and age, when you can blow up like that in a way that maybe you couldn't in the past. Yeah. You know, how do you pace? You know, there's no way to pace it because if it's your time and you blow up and you're the zeitgeist. You know, she's taking it to all sorts of extremes, which is great. She's like, "This is my moment. I'm going to do the production. I'm going to do the music. I'm going to get on the." Sh- uh, you know, yeah. she's, she's like really. Very typically, though, I think that she she cut out certain um, collaboration. I again, I don't know this firsthand. Yes, yeah. this, this is my opinion. I feel like she cut out certain collaborations, both on the business and the creative side, that were instrumental in getting her to where she was on the first album. Interesting. And I think you can hear it. I think you can hear their their influence is missing. Interesting. Do you think? of all the artists of today, because we look at people who have lasted from the past, and people who maybe at the time weren't going to, we didn't think would be an influence, like a Black Sabbath or an Alice in Chains or whatever, that all of a sudden all these bands 10 years later came and were like, wow, they actually influenced a lot of bands. Who of today, today's artists, do you think are really going to actually be around in a couple decades? You know, I mean, not just as a nostalgia act, but, you know. This is actually a really good question. Who are our generation's timeless artists, basically? Yeah. I mean, a guy like Ryan Tedder. Ryan could be that. Ryan could be not that. just the, but not just through his own One Republic stuff. Oh, but stuff he's done. Yeah. yeah. Right. So his songs will last. Ryan could good. be like in a David Foster yeah. sort of capacity. You know? yeah. Honestly, before this new Gaga album, I probably would have said Gaga, even though it was still very Madonna asking what she was doing. Yeah. Was was really doing something so different. I could see some of the dance people being legends in the dance world. You know. You think in 2037 we're going to see a huge worldwide Justin Bieber tour? No. Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> this is going to bother me now. This is a really good, that's a really good question. Well, we can catch up on that. Let's, can I come back to you on that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Totally. Okay. Well, I, I thank you for your time. Thank I you so think much. We went beyond, yeah, we went beyond the world of keyboard. No, but, uh, this, is, this, is, this is fun. Evan Bogart, thank you. I'm Robbie Jeanette for Keyboard Magazine. We'll uh, see you soon. Keep playing keys.